Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Productivity. How much we make divided by how long it takes us to make it. Our inability to make more in less time is what lies behind the latest grim productivity forecasts. Everyone agrees something must be done, but no one seems that clear what the problem is. And there are some out there who believe the glory days of technological advance now lie behind us. Our economist correspondent, Helen Ebrahimi, has this report. Working hard to go faster. But the British economy seems to be faltering as our productivity hits the wall. It's what's made the West rich over the last 200 years. But here in Britain, growth has stagnated for a decade, and no one seems to know why. Charlie Bean, the Bank of England's former deputy governor and now OBR guru, says productivity growth rates have stalled to pre-industrial levels. This is basically why living standards have essentially been pretty stagnant over the past decade. It's because uh, productivity has barely risen. The problem in the UK is that if we take five days to build a car, our French or German rivals can do it in four. And that's what productivity is all about. Not working more hours, but getting more done in the time you work. Is it that a worker in the UK just isn't as good as their rival or opposite number sitting in Cologne? Some of it is that, on average, their skills are not as good as, say, the technical skills in Germany. When something goes wrong with the production line, they have to get somebody else to sort it out rather than them being able to do it themselves. Some of it is because they're working with uh, equipment which is older, less efficient than their counterparts. And some of it, frankly, is because British management is not as good as in some other countries. It's not true of the best firms, but we do appear to have quite a long tail of underperforming firms. Why are they underperforming? Are we a country of bad managers? Are we all sitting in an office in Slough with Ricky Gervais as our boss? Well, uh, some of this may well be related to uh, British management being, or some British managers, I don't want to tar all managers, but some British managers not being as uh, effective at managing uh, uh, the uh, business uh, as they could be. Britain's a basket case, but there's also a deeper problem that's a global phenomena. They call them techno-pessimists, and their thesis is that while the 19th and 20th century produced the steam engine, the car and the computer, today technology is all about Instagramming your avocado breakfast or checking into Facebook on your mobile phone. This anxiety is best summed up by PayPal founder Peter Thiel, who famously said, we hoped for flying cars, but what we got was 140 characters. Of course, you may be right that it's a distraction and actually lowers uh, productivity. But I think, I think it's too easy to get, get fixated in thinking, well, the only benefit of uh, the digital revolution is uh, you know, 140 characters on uh, Twitter. I think, I think they've increased the number of characters you can use these. I'm not a Twitterer. The other controversial theory about UK productivity carries a harsh message that a lot of people just won't like. A bargain has been struck in the UK, there are more jobs and less unemployment, but the price has been poor productivity. Would we be better off if, if we fired a proportion of people, boosted our well, productivity? Well, 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 we need some of that creative destruction where less productive uh, activities get pushed out and the workers are relocating into uh, to more productive. It's a price worth paying. Uh, yes, and I, I would emphasise that this doesn't have to take place by firing a load of people and they sit in unemployment waiting for jobs. It's rather they're getting attracted out of the, uh, the backwaters of less productive activity into areas that are more productive. That's what Hammond's budget hoped to achieve, 
But it will take years, maybe decades, for the investment to rework Britain's backwaters. And all at a time when the unknowns of productivity have a treacherous economic twin in Brexit. Hey, Ibrahim, you are joining us now is The Economist, Professor Mariana Matsukato, who is founder and director of UCL's new Institute for Innovation and Public Purpose, and the executive director and principal of Europe Economics, Dr. Andrew Lillico, who has held a range of positions at the right of centre think tanks. Welcome to you both. Let me start with you, Mariana. Um, where did we go wrong with productivity? Well, first of all, I should say that with the budget, what was interesting was that it seemed that people were happy that there was no surprises. I actually think it would have been great if there was a big surprise, and that surprise should have been a decision to move from a different type of growth to a different type of growth, from mm -hmm. consumption-led to investment-led. We are currently, uh, you know, the ratio of personal debt to disposable income is inching back to record levels. So productivity, the whole conversation about productivity mm -hmm. is actually about what kind of growth do we want. And to have investment-led growth, you need all the different types of investments that will actually lead to higher productivity. I think that we're seeing some patches of that, but mm -hmm. what you also actually need is coherence in a system through which these investments actually lead to a new type of economy. So on Monday, when Greg Clark actually announces an industrial strategy, mm -hmm. that's, I think, what we should be waiting for, to hear some real investments and a coherence of a plan that leads to increases in productivity. But briefly, what you're saying is that we've completely misunderstood, in your view, what productivity should be all about. Well, we should remember that economic growth and innovation, by the mm. way, have not just a rate, but a direction. So the kind of growth that we've been having, which is consumption-led, mm. definitely will not lead to productivity. To have investment-led growth, the big question is, what should we be investing in? Mm. And how, then, do we actually create a system of innovation, a system where we actually have industrial policy, which gets lots of different sectors to make those investments that they actually have not been making, because we have an ultra-financialized real economy in this okay. country. Andrew, well, where did I we go wrong? Well, just as um, I think that it's both true that uh, the reasons why we have low productivity growth uh, are complex, and there's no one reason, there's no one solution to them. So I think that it's partly a matter of uh, that the British economy has been very successful in creating jobs, but the jobs that we've been su uh, successful in creating have tended to be at below average levels of uh, income, which has meant that the uh, uh, wages associated with them have been relatively low. Uh, the, uh, we've had quite a, we've had a period of quite high levels of public spending relative to GDP, mm -hmm. and public sector productivity tends to be both measured quite poorly and, in fact, relatively low compared with private sector output. And I think to some extent with having got spending down, that will help us to recover. There's some hangover from the financial crisis and difficulties mm -hmm. in lending and so on. And the final thing which is worth perhaps mentioning at the moment is that uh, with having had very low interest rates, when interest rates go up mm -hmm. a little bit, I think that will force slightly higher productivity growth. Okay, one of the big issues that we always talk about when we deal with this is the role of the state versus the role of private enterprise. Mm -hmm. Has the state been doing enough to get productivity up? Well, first of all, this should never be about state versus private enterprise, but new forms of partnerships. They both have to do their job. And we've definitely had lagging private investments in things like R&D. Uh, mm -hmm. The UK actually has below OECD average spending on research and because development. companies so are sitting on piles of cash. They're sitting on piles of cash, but to be honest, they're also rewarded for doing so. I mean, there's all sorts of ways, you know, there's this notion that we should be leveling the playing field through policy. I actually think that we should be tilting the playing field by actually rewarding certain kinds of investments, for example, long-term investments over short-run ones. But we, t we continue to have a speculative financial sector as well as a corporate governance structure, mm. which continues to be quite short-term. How do you change that? You have to really, first of all, decide to do that, and that's where I, where I think surprises actually are good. Um, but in terms of the state, I mean, the state is not just about spending, right? This is not about do some infrastructure sure. here and there, some pet projects, whether it's digital or something else. It really requires a system of innovation. The biggest, um, I think, lesson is actually the Soviet Union was spending more than Japan on research and development back in the 80s, but it grew less. And that's mm -hmm. because it actually didn't have a system of innovation that created those linkages between science and industry, linkages between different types of industries. And building a system of innovation where both public and private are co-investing, where you also have patient long-term finance right. from the state, which we continue not to have. And there, there's some interesting conversations in Scotland where they're trying to build a proper sort of mm. you know, national investment bank of the type that you know, the KFW sure. has or is in Germany. 
all these different components are crucial. It's not just about, again, spending a bit here and there. Okay. Um, we also have to move on to Brexit. We've got very little time. Left. Is Brexit going to be good pro for productivity or bad? Simple question. Well, in terms of the short-term numbers, it's likely to be poor because we'll grow quite poorly over the next uh, four or five years, particularly as we have some transitional costs. Also, the uncertainty doesn't help companies, does yes, it? Yes, and, and a lot of struggles and people debating, spending all their time on Twitter debating about Brexit mm. instead of uh, actually doing any work. Um, but uh, over the uh, longer term, I think it pr presents a new set of opportunities for us and some of the things that Philip Pan was talking about new technologies driverless cars artificial intelligence those mm -hmm. kinds of things I think we'll be better placed after brexit to take advantages of the uh, to take advantage of those because I think that the regulatory environment which we can uh, create as a consequence of having left the EU should be more flexible but in terms of the you know the zero hours contracts low interest rates the kind of flexibility in the labor market there, that is bad for productivity isn't it because it means that companies don't have to invest in in clever new tools in order to raise their productivity they can just you know muddle along on a month-by-month on a -month basis I don't think that's right I think that uh, a lot of what, what happens with zero hours contracts and so on is that you're able to access additional people in mm. the labor market women and uh, and uh, mm. uh, people with more constraints on mm. the hours that they can work so it actually allows you to access higher productivity people than you would be able to either, okay. otherwise 20 seconds on brexit good or bad for productivity well just in terms of the numbers terrible in terms of how much money and you know I really think that the remainers didn't make enough of this how much mm. money actually UK companies and UK researchers have gotten from yeah. Europe you know 1.6 billion from Horizon 1.72 for the structural funds yeah. this is billion per year 7 billion from the European Investment okay. Bank so but those are just numbers but the real issue is what drives okay. business investment is exp um, expectations of future growth and the size of the market matters we massively diminish this um, diminish the size of the market okay. and business will react and they are reacting sadly we've run out of time uh, Marina Matsukoza Andrew Luko thanks very much indeed